Hey everybody, Chris Kikosa from the Friends of Israel blog. I'm very excited to be with you. Uh, I have Josh Reinstein with me from Israel. Uh, Josh Reinstein is the director of the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus. And he is also uh, considered, because of the work that he's doing with the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus, he's considered one of the 50 most influential Jewish people in the world by Jerusalem Post for the work that he's doing connecting uh, the Christian communities all around the world and the nation of Israel together. So I want to welcome Josh Reinstein. Josh, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on your show. Josh, I am here in your hometown of Dallas, Texas. Is that right? Yeah, well, you know, I've been trying to live it down since we lost to the Chargers this week. But, uh, yeah, big D. Big D, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I wish we could trade. I'd, I'd like to be in Israel right now. So maybe we can switch next time you come to Dallas. Uh, I'm not too willing to do that, I don't think. But <laughs> next time in Dallas, we can definitely meet for lunch. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, Josh, I'm really glad that you're with us. There, you know, have been, have been so many movements politically uh, or in the Middle East. You know, last week Syria was the big deal. And this week it seems to be that Iran uh, is becoming a serious player. They've always been, but it's being brought to our attention again because of some of the things going on. This new Iranian president, uh, Hassan Rouhani, he's considered by the American press to be moderate. Uh, President Obama made historical moves to call him, ending 30, more than 30 uh, years of silence between America and Iran. Uh, do you think that this idea of a moderate president, this term moderate, uh, is the same uh, in Iranian politics as it is in both Israeli and American politics? Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a moderate in Iranian politics. Uh, Iran is a theological Islamist dictatorship, uh, no freedoms, no rights, complete uh, and utter disrespect for religious freedoms, gender rights, democracy. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a really, really scary place, and it's run not by its president, and there is no democracy there. It's run by the Ayatollahs. And basically what's happened is they thought it would be a good PR stunt to put this smiley, nice, happy guy as their president instead of Ahmadinejad, who's been a, you know, a real international villain. Yeah. Uh, and no one thought it would work, to tell you the truth, but it seems to be getting traction. The, the, the whole idea is a farce. Nothing's changed in Iran. Iran is and will always be until their nuclear program is destroyed the greatest threat to the world today. Not only is it a threat to Israel, which is the tip of the sword, but it's an incredible threat to Europe where they have met what missiles that can hit Europe and the United States where they're developing missiles that can hit the United States. They don't need those long-range missiles to hit Israel. It's not for us. But it's also a huge threat to the Arab world. Saudi Arabia and some of the countries around are scared to death of a nuclear Iran. And this whole publicity stunt is actually gaining traction, which is a very scary development. Yeah. Uh, so ultimately with this new president, um, does Israel view him, I guess, any different than they did Ahmadinejad? Does, do they, uh, are you playing into uh, this new president's more... Uh, Keep this way, or smile, as you said. Look, we, we, view him, we view him as more dangerous than Ahmadinejad, because with Ahmadinejad, everyone knew he was the bad guy. He would run around saying crazy things like the Holocaust never happened, and he's going to wipe Israel off the map. And it was clear, you know, those guys were crazy nightbags, and uh, we were not going to let them get nuclear weapons, and everyone was for it. Here, we have a president who is saying very nice and calm things, very rational statements, but a representative of the same evil regime of Iran. And although you would think people would be smarter than to fall for it, that's not the case. And so he has become very much more dangerous than Ahmadinejad because he's so successful in convincing people that something's changed in Iran when it hasn't. They're feverishly working to, for a nuclear weapon 
so they can wipe off Israel off the map, which is their official foreign policy, and then start terrorizing Europe and other places around the Middle East. I mean, that's, that's the facts, and they're very close to getting it. This new ploy is just buying them time to develop those weapons. And uh, I, I, I hope all of you tune in to the speech by Prime Minister Netanyahu this evening because I think he's going to set the record very straight on these issues. That, that's good that you said that uh, because when you're talking about the supreme leader, the Ayatollah, uh, can you, can you uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, can you talk about him a little bit? Can you highlight so that we can understand how the politics work over there? Well, basically, uh, the, in Iran, it's a theocracy. So the Ayatollahs, who are like the, you know, we'd be like the head, I guess, the Pope for the Catholics, or a huge priest or pastor for Christians, or the chief rabbi for Israel, is actually the leader of the country. They have the, their own army on top of the Iranian army called the Revolutionary Guard. That's only job is to protect the Ayatollahs. So they can create a system of secret service within the country where they can keep tabs on what everyone's saying, where they're moving, because it's really the most oppressive dictatorship on the planet today. Uh, that and probably North Korea would be in the running. The, the president really has to do the bidding of the Ayatollahs, and if the president steps out too far against the Ayatollahs, then he won't be president anymore. Mm -hmm. And that that's something that is is very important for Western uh, citizens to understand it's not a democracy. There wasn't a popular vote where Ruhaimi, uh, the new pr president, was elected. He would not be president if the Ayatollahs didn't agree to that. Right. Uh, right. So that that's really what they've done. Now they've done something very clever in in getting him to speak in a moderate voice. But he's not a moderate. He only serves the interests of the Islamist nation of Iran. Uh, and Iran is the number one state sponsor of terrorism around the world. They're funding the Syrians, uh, who's killed over 120,000 people, use chemical weapons on their own people. They fund Hezbollah, that has 100,000 rockets on the northern Israeli border. They fund Hamas, which is a terrorist organization in Gaza that's been sending thousands of rockets into Israel. And they perpetrate terrorist attacks around the world. Now, this isn't opinion. This is all fact. And that's why it's so ridiculous that people are falling for this, what they call, charm offensive. Yes. And it seems to be working, too. I mean, I, I know that the Guard, at least from the way that the media in the U.S. has presented it, the Guard that we had against Iran, it almost seems to be uh, let down a little bit because of this uh, new president's way of presenting himself. Uh, to the American people. And I want to ask, do you think most Iranians agree uh, with, with their new president or, and, and, and ultimately the, the Islamic Republic leadership there? Or do you think they really value uh, freedom in some way? I think the actual people of Iran are the biggest victims in the whole story. I mean, they're oppressed in ways that we could never imagine. Women aren't allowed to show their face in public in Iran. They can't drive a car. They can't be educated. It, it's really, like, that's 50% of the population right there that are treated like animals. I mean, just worse than animals. And the other people who, who would want freedom or would get news or just enjoy their life are oppressed by a, a very intricate system of secret service, and I would go as far to say as Gestapo-like uh, interior police that, wa that control them. Uh, and this is what's keeping the people from uprising against the Ayatollahs because they have so much uh, forces on the street and they're monitoring so much that if anyone even speaks against the government, they're taken out and shot. So I, I don't think that they really have a say in what's going on anymore. The, the whole nation of Iran uh, at the end of the 70s in the big revolution against the Shah was taken over by the Islamist Ayatollahs and they reign supreme. They're the supreme Ayatollah that reigns the, uh, the country, that runs the country. And the people's will is not taken into account at all. What are the people of Israel thinking about all that's happening right now? Can you give us an update on the things that are happening over there? Well, this is, of course, a very worrying development because the biggest danger to Israel, the only thing that could really destroy Israel, is a nuclear Iran. And we know that they're trying to get nuclear weapons. They say it. This is their foreign policy. Not for peaceful means, but because they're trying to wipe Israel off the map. That's what they want to do with these nuclear weapons. So if they're allowed to get it, we know the first nuke in the air is coming towards us. 
So this is a very scary situation for us. Uh, we trust in, uh, first of all, our Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's put his finger on the pulse of this issue, been following it very carefully, and hopefully he'll be able to make a persuasive uh, argument for an international effort to stop this, or hopefully if that doesn't work, he'll go it alone and wipe out their nuclear uh, weapons. Uh, but this is by far the number one fear on the minds of all Israelis, that the, that Iran could get nuclear weapons. It, it seems that it would be unthinkable a few years ago, but today it's, you know, month by month, week by week. We don't know. It could happen any minute now. They could announce any day that they have nuclear weapons, and then it's game over. Mm -hmm. Josh, there's a lot going on, and I hope that we can keep the people informed together as, uh, as we move forward. I want to thank you so much for your time. I know it's very, very valuable, and um, I want to just really, really uh, you know, thank you for the time that you've given to us. Well, I'd like to thank you for having me on the show, and just to say that you know, as, as gloomy as the picture looks, and I know most of the people who watch this are Bible-believing Christians, we have to say that our past, our present, and our future has been foretold. And I, for one, take great comfort in the fact that there will be peace in Jerusalem, but we have to be vigilant, and we have to know these issues, and we have to take a stand when it comes with our government and uh, international affairs and be educated about this so that we can stop this from happening. So that road is an easy path and not a hard one. So thank you for what you're doing in educating uh, your supporters, and I look forward to being back on the show. Hey, looking forward to it. People, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you for uh, watching today, the FYI blog, and I look forward to more uh, interesting topics to come. Everybody have a great day. God bless.